Well, to discuss the racism and some of the images that we've been seeing, I'm now joined by Dr. Matole Matsecha, who's a historian and a founder of the Kara Heritage Institute. Tate Matsecha, thanks so much indeed for joining us. Welcome to the program. Hello, Dr. Matsecha, can you hear me? I can hear you. Ah, <clears throat> great. Um, the images that you saw of George Floyd uh, gasping for breath with the knee of a white police officer on his neck must have shaken you. I uh, saw an article that you wrote recently and you were quite angry. Very, very angry because this cold-blooded murder of the blameless George Floyd by Donald Trump police is the resurgence of racism against the African humanity in the US, which is as dangerous as the coronavirus and which is a threat to international peace, prosperity, and stability. Just last year in 2019, Africa and the diaspora commemorated the 400 years anniversary of the transatlantic slave trade, which was justified by racism by European American Christian slave traders. One would have expected that by now that they were left off the hook without even an apology, a confession, repatriation, that they would not do what they did to brother George Floyd is really disgusting that 400 years after this uh, transatlantic uh, slave trade, this can be done to an African American. They are not even ashamed that they call themselves Christians. All right, Dr. Matseka, uh, in your article, which I read, um, you trace the roots of racism to, to way, way back. Take us back to when you think that the problems of racism started to surface in history. The problem started when an Ethiopian or Nubian, African, fathered a child with Sarah, the wife of, uh, the wife of Abraham, and fathered Isaac. And there was an attempt to call kill Isaac because he was black. And when the Abraham could not kill him, he fathered Jacob, later known as uh, 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 Israel. And uh, Israel fathered 12 tribes, and these 12 tribes were grandchildren of Africans, which means the 12 tribes of Israel were actually the descendants of African people. But today, the Bible was uh, revised more than a thousand times by Europeans to justify a blatant lie that Africans are descendants of uh, uh, Ham, the son of Noah, when Noah and his grandfather Adam were only supposedly created 4,004 uh, 4, years BC. When we had already built pyramids, we had built sun temples, we had built universities. So it's a blatant lie that we descended from the son of uh, Ham, the child of uh, Noah. Noah is very young, Africa is very old. All right, so are you saying that perhaps uh, some of the racism that we see and experience today has its roots in religion over time? It has a root in religion, but religion is not a bad thing. Mm. But uh, Europeans, white Europeans, they revised the original Bible, which was written by African theologians, at the University of Alexandria. The people who wrote the Bible were actually Africans. And once this 
Bible fell in the hands of Europeans. They whitewashed the personalities in the Bible and made God white, angels white, and they made everything white, and then they painted the real authors of the Bible, including, including, including Yeshua ben Miriam, because Jesus was a black man. He was killed because he was a black man. And they say he was killed for our sins. Which sins? We had not committed any sins, and they killed him. So George Floyd is killed like Jesus because of the color of his skin. So this, critic, this racism goes from the falsification of human history, of uh, the falsification of the Bible. And that's why right now our people may think that there's something wrong with religion. There's nothing wrong with religion. There's something greatly wrong with the whites who revise the Bible, who say it is the word of God. How do you revise the word of God unless you have had breakfast with God? Which white man has had breakfast with God? Which white man has seen God? So what do we do in 2020? We see what's uh, playing out uh, with uh, the killings of people like George Floyd, who represents many uh, of such like that. Um, and I keep wondering, if all of this happened and started in history, why is it the children and the children of the children of those originators carry this racism with them in 2020? What we need to do is to rewrite the history of the world. The history of humanity did not start with, uh, with Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve's history starts in 4004 BC. But more than 30,000 before that, the pyramids already existed mm. in Ethiopia or Nubia, which is the heartland of Africa. And what is called Egypt was created by African people. Actually, that Egypt was underwater. It was uh, established by Africans. And uh, there is no European who is civilized, who was not civilized by the civilization that came from black Africa and which went to Europe through Egypt. Mm. And that's why they create another lie that uh, Egypt was uh, the creation of uh, Aryans from Atlantic. There's no Atlantic. That ocean, which they call Atlantic Ocean, is actually the Ethiopian Ocean. This ocean, which they call Indian Ocean, is the Zanj, uh, is the Zanj Ocean. So we are living under lies. We are taught lies. And we are professors and doctors of lies. We are transmitting lies to our children. So we are suffering because we continue to accept blatant lies coming through us in the form of religions. So we, we need to go back and rewrite history. And right now, I sit here in Midrand. We have a, a Pan-African parliament. We speak all languages except Kiswahili, which is one of the official languages of the uh, AU. We need to get Africa to speak Kiswahili. We must have one language. We can't be speaking Portuguese, French, English, and all these languages here. When we have our own language, Kiswahili, which we can teach our children, we need to decolonize knowledge. We need to decolonize education. We need to free ourselves. This 21st century, our leaders have correctly said it is the African century. We must make it truly an African century by decolonizing knowledge so that we don't have other George Floyds uh, on the globe. So decolonizing our education will empower black people, but how will that <laughs> change the attitude of white racists? They will know that the African people are the first of humanity. 
and that has been recorded by white people, they will know that actually what they call Western civilization is not Western civilization, is stolen African civilization. That's why they had to uh, enslave us for 400 years and colonize us and oppress us so that we lose sight of the fact that we gave the world religion, education, and civilization. Now is the time that we have to wake up and say, we are the father of humanity. We, Africa is the father of humanity. Africa is the father of civilization. So all these books which are being sold are really a propagation of lies and we must start rewriting these buys, the, 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 these books, because African people today are the uh, principal transmitters of the lies, uh, blue lies created by racists. We have to change the situation. We cannot afford to have another uh, Floyd. Floyd is the last that must have died uh, uh, for our, uh, because of the color of his skin. All right, so this is the African century, but one of the things that we need to find is unity on the continent. And I'm starting to see a rise again, sadly, of uh, Afrophobia. How do we manage this? And what do you think caused it in the first instance? Afrophobia is the byproduct of colonization. Because in 1885, Africa was divided amongst the French, the English, the Portuguese, the Spaniards. Now that's why some people today are proud to be uh, Anglophone, others are proud to be Saxophone. And uh, when we meet here in the Pan-African Parliament, we must speak French, we must speak uh, English, we must, we must speak Spanish, and uh, we see differences amongst ourselves which should not exist. So we, uh, that's why I say we need a lingua franca, which is Kiswahili, and I must uh, congratulate the African leadership in the SADC countries who decided in Tanzania that uh, Kiswahili must be the official language. The University of Namibia is teaching Kiswahili, the University of uh, uh, Zimbabwe is teaching Kiswahili, and all countries, all universities on the continent must teach Kiswahili. We must communicate, and we, we must stop to be anglophone of such a form. We are fighting amongst ourselves as Africans because we are fighting for crumbs falling from the tables of the for, former slave masters and uh, uh, colonial masters. And that's why today we are proud to be free. But this is not freedom. We are only politically free. We are not socially free. Socially free. So the struggle has to continue. Dr. Matole Mazeha, we're going to have to leave it there, but uh, I think we're going to have to have a few more conversations uh, in the coming weeks. Thanks so much indeed uh, for this being the first one. I look forward to chatting to you again soon. Thank you, my brother. Thank you very much. That's uh, Dr. Matole Mazeha, who was talking to us uh, about uh, the situation, uh, not just in America, but uh, racism in general and its origins uh, being partly because of distorted history that we need to correct and uh, for African people in this African century uh, to take their place in the world. Let's go to East.